Most of you will be familiar with the water pump as a means of generating a vacuum in a laboratory, but you'll probably also be familiar with some of the disadvantages. Um, depending on how many other people are using pumps, the water pressure can get a bit low and the vacuum that you generate is rarely better than about 15 millimeters of mercury. Now some applications such as a high, a low pressure vacuum distillation require a much lower vacuum than this. And in order to achieve that, you're going to have to go over to a pump that's based on oil. Now these pumps generally come as a mobile unit mounted on a trolley and they're often referred to as trolley pumps. I'll quickly explain the various components of a trolley pump and then we'll actually switch it on. The unit here is the actual mechanical pump itself with an oil reservoir and the oil vapors are vented away to a fume cupboard because they can be toxic. The pump itself leads to a three-way tap and from then on to a potassium hydroxide tube. The purpose of this is to extract corrosive gases such as hydrogen chloride and so on that your reaction maybe generates and if they get inside the actual mechanical pump they'll obviously corrode it. So we have this to remove these nasty vapors. Moving on along, along a bit further we have a liquid nitrogen trap. The purpose of this is to remove solvents and various other things that you might be distilling off and we also don't want them to get into the oil pump, they'll also degrade its performance. Down here we can actually see the trap itself. Now it's a good idea to make sure this is clean and dry before you start. Quite a common feature is that you end up by distilling whatever it is you've made into the trap rather than into your apparatus and uh, until you know you've done this it's best not to throw it away and it obviously helps to have a clean tube before you start and it's lightly greased to help hold the vacuum. Up here, this unit here is actually called a vacuostat and it measures the vacuum in your apparatus and over here we have another tap that leads via some pressure tubing to your apparatus. Remember to use pressure tubing and not normal tubing because the normal tubing will collapse inwards. Now having explained the various bits and pieces of this, I'll now show you how to turn it on. Now there's a set procedure that has to be followed, otherwise you'll either make a mess or even um, worse, a, a complete disaster of your experiment. First of all, you've got to make sure that all these stopcocks are closed on the apparatus before you switch it on. I'll close this one. Make sure that you hold the apparatus in case it breaks. And we can now turn the pump on at the mains. The main switch in this particular model happens to be located here. Now, the pump will make a characteristic noise when it's pulling a good vacuum and an entirely different noise when it's pulling a lousy vacuum and you'll soon learn to recognize the difference between the two. This more or less is what a good pump sounds like and if the pump isn't pulling a good vacuum it's got a knocking sound about it. Having established that the pump is actually working, you can now evacuate the potassium hydroxide drying tube by turning the three-way valve in the right direction. You can often hear a slight change in the note of the pump at this stage as the air goes through it. When this is evacuated, you can now very carefully open this valve to the liquid nitrogen trap. Now at this stage, you can go to the stores and get a liquid nitrogen dewer full of liquid nitrogen and very carefully place it over the trap. Now when you do this, liquid nitrogen is going to spurt everywhere and some of it will actually land on your hand. 
Surprisingly, this isn't particularly painful. Actually, it can be quite painful if your hand is wet because you then get frostbite. So make sure you've got a dry hand. If in doubt, wear a glove. And when the trap is in place, keep it there by moving this thing over. One thing I should emphasize at this point is never put the dewer in place when there isn't a vacuum in the trap because liquid oxygen will collect and if liquid oxygen gets in contact with any combustible materials we can all imagine what will happen. So make sure that the trap is evacuated before doing this particular operation. After a few minutes you can let the system stabilize and proceed to measure the vacuum inside the apparatus. There's a stopcock here that controls the access to the vacuostat and we'll now proceed to explain what to do and what not to do with the vacuostat. This vacuostat contains mercury reservoir here and in order to measure the vacuum in the apparatus we have to slowly tilt this to a vertical position. Now it's absolutely vital that this tilting is, is done slowly. If you don't do it slowly, mercury is going to get into this section here and from then on into the apparatus and, and contaminate everything. Now continue tilting and you'll see two levels of mercury. The one on the right hand side has to be aligned with this little marker at the top here. You can just see that it's now aligned. And the pressure is read off on the left hand one. In this particular case the pressure corresponds to about 0.1 of a millimeter of mercury. When you're satisfied, very slowly rotate the entire device round to a horizontal position again. And again, don't do this too quickly or mercury will get everywhere. And this is the position it should always be left in. Now having established that the trolley pump is pulling a good vacuum, you can proceed to connect it to your apparatus. Normally this will be a distillation apparatus, but for the purposes of demonstrating this pump, I've got a little flask here that contains some liquid with a few traces of solvent, which we're going to remove. You connect the adapter up and very carefully turn the valve to open it to the apparatus. It's best to do this as slowly as you can in case it spurts or some other accidents happen. Now, one of the biggest problems with using a vacuum pump of this type is leaks. If you're going to do a, a distillation Leaks can be a problem if you don't attain the vacuum you want. And there are a few simple precautions that you can take to make sure that your apparatus doesn't leak. When assembling your distillation apparatus, you should make sure that all of the glass joints are well greased with Apiazon grease. This is the only type of grease that you should use for the joints, and it'll be available in the laboratory. Another thing that you should check your apparatus for is small fractures in the glassware. Sometimes it can be cracked. You can't see it very easily, but the air will get in and produce a very poor vacuum. So just have a quick look around your apparatus to see if anything is obviously broken. One or two other points about setting your distillation apparatus up. Sometimes people use this type of thermometer adapter in their apparatus. It contains a Teflon seal at the top here through which the thermometer goes. Now, this type of adapter leaks very badly and it should never be used if you're doing a vacuum distillation. If you're doing a vacuum distillation, you should use either a thermometer with a ground glass joint of this type or you can use a thermometer pocket which fits into your distillation apparatus and you pour either liquid paraffin or mercury and then you place your thermometer in there. So that will ensure that you get a good vacuum in your apparatus. Another common failing when you're doing a distillation is if a lot of solvent comes out of your distillation apparatus and it eventually fills up 
the nitrogen trap here, which becomes clogged, and you get a poor vacuum. If you think that might be the cause, you'll have to stop the distillation um, and essentially stop the pump in a manner that I'll demonstrate in a few minutes' time, clean out the trap, and again, remember, don't throw the contents away because they may, in fact, be what you want to get, and start again. Um, if all of these precautions still result in a poor vacuum in your apparatus, and you should be constantly measuring this vacuum by measuring it on the vacuum stat three or four times during the distillation to make sure it doesn't change. If you've still got a poor vacuum, you should gradually isolate the apparatus in turn. For example, turning this stopcock here, if it suddenly dramatically improves the vacuum that you're getting, then you will realize that the leak must be somewhere in your distillation apparatus. And gradually you can isolate all the other bits of the apparatus until you've found the leak. A little bit of perseverance and a bit of intelligence should solve that problem for you. Now, assuming you've done your distillation, and one thing you should bear in mind is to make sure the nitrogen in the dewer uh, doesn't run out if it's a particularly long distillation. Having done your distillation, you have to turn the apparatus off. And again, in doing this, one or two simple precautions have to be taken to make sure that a disaster doesn't occur. You've turned this tap off here to your apparatus. The next thing to do is to turn the stopcock leading to the nitrogen trap here. Turn it off, isolating the nitrogen trap from the actual pump, and open it to the air. A little hiss is heard as the air goes in. Now, fairly quickly, to avoid accumulation of liquid oxygen in the trap, you should remove the dewer. And as soon as the trap has thawed out sufficiently to allow you to take it off, you should remove it in case it drops off on its own accord. And, of course, you shouldn't throw this away. This may be valuable. And put this down here. The next thing to do is to actually turn the pump off. You should turn this three-way tap here so that it's open to the atmosphere. You can hear the change in noise as the pump is now pumping on the atmosphere. And fairly quickly, turn it off at the mains. Now, you should always make sure that when you've turned the pump off at the mains that this valve here is open to the atmosphere, otherwise the oil will suck back from the pump into this apparatus and make an awful mess. One or two final things need to be done before you can pass the apparatus on to the next person that wishes to use it. The KOH drying chamber here is still under vacuum and you should just gently release that. You can hear the rush of air as it goes in. And the vacuostat is probably still under vacuum, so you should open that stopcock as well and the apparatus is now ready for the next person who wants to use it.